What is good, Tesla family? It's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's going on with Tesla stock, what happened to Tesla for today, and what's going on with the overall market as I also break down SPY, NVIDIA, the QQQ, and a couple of other tickers. I'm also going to break down why tomorrow is going to be a very important day as it's going to be the last trading day of 2023, how this could end up affecting Tesla and many tickers out there. But before I break into all this information, before I get into any more details, let me just mention a couple of things. Personally, I am not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this. It not only benefits me, it benefits the entire Tesla community as a whole. So looking at Tesla, we had a very, very interesting day. I was saying that Tesla was holding up very nicely in the beginning. We got this nice push up. Tesla was trying to hold above the yellow trend line, and it was looking very, very strong when we opened for today. But then what happened was... A lot of these mainstream news articles came out with some very negative news about Tesla. We saw some new news coming out involving some senators and some politics, and the whole thing was a big mess, and this caused Tesla to sell off quite a bit. There were also other headlines that were quite negative unnecessarily about Tesla, and we saw this continue to hurt the share price as Tesla saw a big drop today, closing down over 3%. Now, what's interesting is... SPY was kind of a green. It just barely closed green. It held up for the most part, right? Apple held up. NVIDIA closed green. QQQ was a little red, but very flat. It was only down like 0.05%. Most stocks out there held up quite nicely from Microsoft to you know Amazon and Meta. Most of the market held up, and then Tesla was the only one that really underperformed, being down over 3%. So that goes to show that Tesla should have held up. Tesla should have tried to hold up with the market. But there was an external piece of news for just Tesla that ended up causing this big drop. So I wanted to talk about that and why this happened and then break down what is likely going to happen for tomorrow, in my opinion. So, but first, I just want to call out that tomorrow is going to be a very important day. Tomorrow is going to be uh, the last trading day of 2023. And we have just under 850,000 calls expiring for SPY and over 1.65 million of the puts expiring. This means that we have a 1.96 puts to call ratio or two puts for every one call expiring with a max pain of 471, which will be adjusted tomorrow depending on uh, the timing. So with that being said, lots of puts expiring. Market makers can be incentivized to hold the market up for one more day. But I do want to call out that when you look at the fear and greed index and other things like that, uh, the market's still at this extreme greed right now. You can see extreme greed is still making up market momentum and the current sentiment. And when we hit these extremes, this tends to mark the top, as I believe the market's in the topping process. I personally think that the S&P 500 is in the topping process. It could push up a little bit more tomorrow since it's going to be the last trading day of the year and the market may close in a very high end. But going into January for the first one to two weeks, there could be a pullback starting during one of those time frames. Could take like another week or so, but I think a pullback is coming, and I think that this is still suggesting that. So once again, could the market hold up tomorrow? Yes, it can. Could the market hold up for another couple of trading days? Sure, it can. But ultimately, I see a pullback in January, and I think that these indicators are suggesting this, looking at market momentum at extreme greed. It's been there for many weeks. And the same thing with the puts and call positioning. This is at extreme greed as well. And this is when the sentiment tends to shift when the tops tend to form. Now, for data for tomorrow, as a reminder, there's actually not really much data coming out. It's a very quiet data day. We have the Chicago PMI report coming out at 9.45 a.m. This is going to give us a gauge of how the economy is looking. We want this to be between 50 and 51, so we'll just have to wait and see. And that's pretty much it for data. No more data for the rest of the day as we're approaching the new year, the last trading day of the year. But what's going on with Tesla? Why was Tesla underperforming? Here's your answer, guys. Basically, Tesla put on their Twitter page that Reuters published an article that led with lots of misleading headlines they claim this is what tesla is saying that tesla is blamed for basically i'm sorry tesla is blaming drivers for failures of parts it knew were defective so it's basically criticizing tesla for that that's what the headline said according to reuters and tesla said that in reality it paid for most of the 120,000 vehicle repairs under warranty so tesla is saying that we have misleading headlines you're basically saying that Tesla's are faulty. They have all these issues, and all Tesla's doing is just, uh, you know, blaming, you know, the, the customers of anything. But that's not actually what's going on based off what Tesla's showing us with their warranties, helping to, you know, uh, uh, kind of like take advantage of this, helping to just uh, reduce the costs and etc. So this is a false accusation, according to Tesla. They provided lots of evidence for this claim, and this is very, very important stuff. But this article 
led to some more effects which were very, very negative for Tesla. So this news came out yesterday, but this started to make a lot of headlines today. Two U.S. senators call for Tesla recalls after Reuters investigation. So this is very important. First off, this Reuters article was not entirely true, and yet the senators are now attacking Tesla and also Elon Musk. And this is some big news. They're coming out. They wrote a very important letter, and they said that Elon Musk is doing a horrible job, that he was also a part of this. He's just like, uh, you know, very, very false and, and, and wrong for just uh, blaming customers, which is something I didn't actually see. So it's very interesting. They're also saying that Tesla has a, a need for recalls because of steering and suspension issues, which are leading to more safety risks. They're saying that Teslas are not safe. They basically said that. And they said that based off the NHTSA's investigations, there are lots of failures and de defective parts. And they, they claim that Tesla is saying it's because of driver abuse. But in reality, that's not at all what the context suggested. So very important stuff right over here. Uh, they're saying that there's a lot of other suspension fail failures, steering failures, and axle part failures. And it's these senators right over here who are just continuing uh, to criticize Tesla. And with the news about the potential recall and all this criticism of Elon Musk, this was very negative for Tesla, leading to a slight sell-off. Then we start to see sentiment shift from the media. There's more news coming out that Xiaomi, I know I may be saying that wrong, but this company is unveiling its first EV, which is now you know, going to compete with Tesla. There's also news about another company doing that. And all this negative news started to come out for Tesla, which really hurts the share price today. Uh, so that was pretty big. There was news about a robot from Tesla, uh, which actually hurts one of the employees. That was one of the assembly robots. Uh, that actually happened about two years ago, according to the reports, but it's still making headlines today uh, because of another investigation. So lots of negative news, guys. I mean, you know, with robots having issues to all this news about a potential recall and all this bad news, that's why Tesla sold off. Even though, you know, what the senator said was based off an article that was making false accusations about Tesla, as Tesla mentioned on their Twitter page. It is what it is, guys. We just have to accept the reality of the situation. Now, we did have some good news. Morgan Stanley is saying that Tesla still has lots and lots of potential outside of the EV business. They're talking about robotics and AI, and they're saying that Tesla, this is according to Adam Jonas, who's, who's raising Tesla's price target to $380 for next year. That is, once again, bullish news for now. But that's it for the news, guys. The news is just full of chaos. There's lots of manipulation. I find it very interesting how Tesla was breaking out. Tesla was pumping in anticipation of their uh, massive and very, very uh, ambitious records to be broken when it comes to their deliveries. Tesla was looking very strong. Then all of a sudden, all this bad news has to come out to hurt Tesla. How interesting is that, right? Uh, but anyways, it is what it is. We just have to accept the reality of it. We can't complain or cry. We just have to uh, kind of accept it, suck it in, and just move on from here, unfortunately. That's how you know the market works. There's nothing we can do about it. All we can do is just accept it. But just be uh, warned that despite all this bad news, whether you're trying to short Tesla or not, the future is still bright for Tesla. It's going to recover anyways, and I'm still very bullish long term. The price price ratio has dropped a bit as Tesla was heavily underperforming. Uh, we tend to be green about 49% of the time on Friday, so it's kind of like a 50-50 day. And on top of this, know that December's tend to be weaker than January's historically for Tesla. But I think that this might shift uh, next year, depending on Tesla's deliveries for January. Look for volatility around noon and at 2 p.m. Those are the most volatile hours for Tesla historically. And our volume was kind of decent, 113 million. We saw some high volume selling. But now the question is, how will Tesla move? And this is going to be very important for tomorrow. So I'm going to be looking at Tesla on the four hour time frame. Okay, this is going to be the most important time frame for me. Watch the 50 EMA at 253.6. You can see Tesla, it did come slightly below that, but now it's trying to get back in the after hours. That's going to be a very important support. If we lose that 253 range, uh, you know, this thing could start sinking down to lower levels like 250. But if we bounce off this support at the 50 EMA, it's going to, in my opinion, retest at least 257, if not 258, and then come back after that. So I think it could try to bounce, but we have to try to hold our low. As long as it holds that, it could attempt to bounce a bit, and we'll just have to watch it very carefully. Now, sometimes with Tesla, guys, I can't always predict everything because there could be new pieces of news that come out, which I can't really predict. Sometimes they just come out of nowhere, and sometimes things like this happen. They don't happen all the time, but it is worth noting. So on Tesla, if you take a Fibonacci retracement chart, our 0.618 retracements at 260, our 0.5 retracements at 250, 
58, which is very close to where our 20 EMA is on the four hour time frame. So in my opinion, as long as we hold this 252 support, because you could see Tesla had support right here historically, we actually bounced off here the last time we tested it. We saw Tesla rebound towards uh, 258. There's a good chance it's going to try to rebound towards that level. But then we're going to be watching this resistance at 258 to 260 and see if we kind of reject back down and kind of trade uh, very flat within this range. So in my opinion, just to clarify, guys, if there's more bad news tomorrow, if the senators say more bad things and there's more politics getting involved, uh, this is the bearish case. Let me just go over all the cases just to prepare you, then tell you what's more probable. If we lose 252, if we continue to break down, watch 250 as key support. We have to try to hold that. If we fail there, then 247 is coming before we get a much bigger reaction after Tesla's notorious deliveries report. All right. So even if we do come down, guys, it's okay. The deliveries will have a bigger effect starting on, on Tuesday, deliveries should come out on, I believe it's Monday, but on Tuesday is when we should see the reaction. So watch that very, very carefully. This is the more bearish case. The bullish case would be Tesla just kind of like straight up rebounds and tries to get back above 260. We want to get back above 260 for us to turn bullish to end the year on a very strong note. And what do I think is more probable in my honest opinion? Well, it's going to depend on how we end up holding. Do we hold 252 or not if we do hold it which i think there's a good chance we will we will temporarily see tesla try to rebound i think it might be revisiting this resistance right over here uh, i have a feeling that we might see tesla do something like this where we kind of push in the morning back to 258 but then we see the negative headlines and the effects of this kind of slow tesla down as time goes on and we see tesla come back down like this trade sideways and kind of close very close to this right before the year ends sorry guys i think i kind of extended this this should be right before the year ends uh, for the last trading day, I think Tesla might close kind of green. It might rebound just a bit and come back down and trade kind of flat. I think this is the most likely possibility for tomorrow. And then we're going to see a much bigger reaction after Tesla's deliveries comes out. That's going to be the much bigger determiner of where Tesla goes. All right, so make sure you watch your levels. Watch two. 255 to 256 is resistance, 258, 260, then 262, and 265 is resistance. For support, we have 252, 250, and then 247 and 244 to 245 below that. I think Tesla will rebound a little bit to try to get very close to 258, and we're going to be watching to see how it reacts to this. It might actually reject and just trade sideways and consolidate a bit before we have the big reaction after deliveries, and I find that very probable for Tesla. Now, when it comes to SPY and some other... Uh, tickers out there. We have a rising wedge that's developing. I think SPY is going to have a pullback most likely in January for the following reasons that I mentioned from the fear and greed index, not to mention other factors. But before we pull back in January, we could try to hold up for one more day tomorrow uh, because of the fact that we have high puts to call ratio and the market is still kind of trading sideways. So I wouldn't be surprised if we get one more push a little bit higher. We try to break those all-time highs uh, for the final day of the year. One more attempts to push up to, you know, 478 to 480. And I think that's between the high we saw today at 477.5 to 480. I think that's where the top is going to be for SPY. I think we're in the topping process. We might push one more time to close the year strong. Then in January, there might be a pullback coming. I think SPY is going to break below this wedge. And we're going to see a true break to the downside in January. All right. So could we push one more time tomorrow? Yes, but could there be a, a big rejection later? That's also going to happen likely in January. That is my view of the markets. I want to make that as clear as possible. All right, so watch resistance at 478. If we break this, you know, we could get very close to 480. 477.5 and 478 is resistance. Excuse me, let me just correct that. For support, watch 477, 476, 475.5. Then we have 475 below that and 474. I think there's a good chance we're going to pop a little bit, try to push up one more time, try to hold up for the end of the year, then a pullback may be coming sometime in January. For the QQQ, we're starting to break below our rising wedge, but I just want to mention that you want to be watching this 412 resistance. We could see this re re rebound towards 412 and kind of trade sideways a bit. Uh, if we're really bullish, you want to see it break down and come up to 413. If we're bearish, you want to see it close below 410. I think it might pop a little bit, then trade sideways since there are all these puts expiring, then kind of retrace a little bit, close very flat and still get a very, very decent day. And then I think that there might be a pullback coming in January. I think a pullback is coming. We're going to see this thing eventually come down to 408. One more pop, then eventually a drop later on or a drop from here is very probable. I, that's what I find to be very, very probable. NVIDIA has two possibilities. Either this thing is going to hold this uh, wedge a little bit longer before we get a very healthy pullback back down to 490 to 488, or we might just pull back as soon as tomorrow. It really depends 
My gut tells me it's going to hold up a bit between 495 to 498 and then sell off later on, either the end of the day tomorrow or by the start of next year. I think that there's a pullback coming from this rising wedge. It, it might try to grab liquidity again before doing so, though. I told you guys yesterday we're going to see 498 to 500 on NVIDIA. That's where this thing is going to likely try to see some tight resistance. We hit 499 today, so it met the target. So now it's just a matter of when this thing is going to just like push and then drop or kind of like drop from here. But I see a pullback coming. Make sure you watch the support levels I called out. I have them right over here. Watch 498 to 500 is tight resistance and 495, 492, and 490 is support. We might pop one more time to maintain this range and then break down later on. So watch that very, very carefully. The breakdown may not happen tomorrow. It may happen starting in 2024. So just be very careful. For Apple stock, I just want to mention that Apple, in my opinion, you know, we got a bullish breakout for now, but we're kind of stuck within the range. We have these two yellow lines, guys. You guys can see them. If we break 194.5, we could turn bullish and break to 195 plus. If we break below 193.5, watch for a pullback towards 192.5. In my opinion, we're going to likely maintain this range and we're going to be watching to see where the bigger move ends up being. But with that being said, those are the main five that we're basically looking at. Now let's break down some more charts out there. For Rivian, I'm going to be very quick, by the way, guys, I want to make this video quick. Rivian, in my opinion, is going to likely see some uh, of what of a, of a retracement. Uh, you know, we have this bearish divergence. It might actually pop one more time towards... Uh, this 23.5 area to almost 24 and then reject that thing it's going to come down to 22.8 later on so i see a little retracement coming soon for sofi it might back to 10.8 at the 20 ema i see it actually retracing a bit to 10.8 and maybe a little bit lower depending if that breaks if it loses 10 watch 9.63 but i think at least 10 is coming for a slight retracement the iwm may push a little bit up as it's going to be the last day of the year it might test 203, then bounce, get one more push up to close very strongly, very close to our range at 205. Then watch and see if we get a rejection for 2024. That is a possibility. But I think it might test 203, then bounce, still hold up for tomorrow. And then we're going to be watching for a big move after that. Uh, for Microsoft, it looks bullish. This thing has a bullish wedge forming right over here. It's a little hard to see, but we have a bullish wedge. I think it might actually retest 378. So watch for a little push on Microsoft, at least for the time being. When it comes to AMD, I think AMD might actually, it depends if it could break 150. If it breaks 150, it could turn bullish and push for 155. If it fails to do so, it could retrace for 144. I think it's going to do a little bit of both. It might back test 150 again. It might actually fail to hold it though. Uh, we might test it and just hold for the time being, but then going into next year, I think it's going to retrace towards 144 again to test the 20 EMA. A little pop and drop is very probable in my honest opinion. For the VIX, there's not much going on. It's very flat, not really causing anything too significant. So I don't really expect much just yet. It's very flat right now. For the SQQ, it's kind of flat as well. Make sure you watch the 20 EMA as resistance. If it breaks 13.3, we could see a push for 13.7. But overall, it's quite flat in my opinion. The dollar index is looking a little bullish, but we need to see it break the 20 EMA. If it breaks this, watch 101.79. If it does break this, it's going to be bearish for the markets. If it gets above 101.79, it's going to be pushing for 103, in my opinion. That's going to be bearish for the month of January. It, it was very, very oversold down here. So I wouldn't be surprised if this bullish divergence does start to play out. This could be marking a top in the market soon. That's why I think the market's in the topping process. Coinbase could, you know, kind of hold up for one more day, test 190, then rejects. I think it's going to retrace for 178 or even below that. So I see some downside coming, maybe one more pop and drop to 178. Google, I was saying it was looking bearish yesterday. And it's actually coming down. I think that it might retest 139.8 very soon on the four hour time frame. So I see some downside coming for Google. For Amazon, I think that this is looking uh, kind of flat right now. It's just trading sideways. We could be looking for a retracement towards 152.21 at the 50 EMA soon, uh, but it hasn't broken down yet. It's just con continuing to just remain completely flat in the 153s. So very boring. Amazon's not really doing much. It might just continue to consolidate for one more day in the 153s, then break down going into like next week. For Meta, I would say that Meta is looking a little bit weaker, but it might back test 360, then reject to come down to 356 and then bounce after that. So a little pop is coming then a drop to test our 20 ema at 356 and it might bounce right back up uh, and continue to maintain this range so a little pop and drop is what i'm anticipating for meta and then we'll see how it reacts to the 20 ema so with that being said guys for spy could this thing push a little bit more towards 
478 to 480. Yes, it can. The market could push up a little bit more. But I think the market's in the topping process. And I think that going into 2024 in January, a pullback is coming. I, I really feel that it's coming. Uh, looking at the bearish divergences, the fear and greed index, and also many other momentum indicators, I'm seeing a potential pullback for 2024's start. We could hold up tomorrow. Tomorrow, the market could hold up just fine. But in January, things could change. So just be very careful. That's it for this one, guys. Hopefully, this video was helpful and insightful. Have a great day and peace out.